Hi friends, I'm Erin Go Live. Welcome to a rainy weekend vlog. I'm always doing updates for my car, so I thought maybe just a little bit of a different angle. I'm about to leave to go to the climbing gym. I've been at the regular gym all morning, um, working and I did my workout. I had one person, my eight o'clock, it's always the first person no-showed me, which means I get to charge her for no-show and I got to walk on the treadmill and get my steps in um, and get paid for it. So as much as I would have loved to have been on the couch reading uh, and drinking more coffee than being at work an hour earlier than I needed to be, um, I was listening to Middle March. So I, if you'd seen before, I had started listening to Middle March on audiobook, made it to like chapter 12 and realized I didn't even know who we were talking about anymore. And so I decided I need to go back to the physical form of the book. I've been doing that and I think I was through chapter six and the, the story is told in multiple books and each book follows, I assume, um, like a different set of characters, all from Middlemarch as far as I understand. And so the first book is about the Brooks and particularly um, the sisters, Dorothea and Celia. And so I'm still in their story. So I picked up, I think in chapter seven um, on the audiobook and listened to, um, I don't know, three or four chapters probably. So I'm, I think I'm almost through their section of the story and I don't know, I, I assume that we come back around. It's an 800 page book. I assume we come back to these same groups of characters. Um, so I know that Mary is part of the next book because Mary was who I heard and I was like, who the hell is Mary? I have no idea who this new person is. So hopefully now that I'm a little bit better grounded in the book, I'll be able to just kind of go back and forth between the audiobook in the physical book. Also, I feel, oh, I forgot to bring it with me. I was gonna bring it with me. Um, I finished Grown on audiobook by Tiffany D. Jackson. Really, really good book. Um, it was way more hard hitting. Like, it's very hard hitting. Way, and I didn't realize when I first went into it that that's what it was. It was one of those where like you see it, you see somebody talk about it and it piques your interest. And like the title sticks with you, but not even necessarily like why you wanted to read it. So that was kind of the case with Grown. So what it is, is a up and coming young high school aged senior, or not say senior, singer. I think she's, I think she's 16 at the beginning and then she's maybe 17 for most of the story. She kind of has a chance meeting with this, um, originally when I talked about this, I said Justin Bieber like person. Well, more like R. Kelly than Justin Bieber. And he's like 28 and she's 16, 17. And he, you know, promises her the moon, recording contract, all this stuff, convinces his, her parents to, you know, let, let her come with him and, um, like travel with him and, and like he's taking her under his wing and he's grooming her and you can see the brainwashing happening and then you know she falls there in love and you see the abuse start to happen we know from the get-go from page one we know that one day she wakes up covered in blood and he is dead so we know that's where the story is going and it's kind of how how we get there so it involves topics like lots of trigger warnings it involves you know um unconsensual sex um sex with a minor emotional abuse physical abuse sexual abuse black women in particular not being listened to um not being believed even by you know their own friends by by the public by the police so that part of it is really, really frustrating and heartbreaking and unfortunately true to life. So yeah, super amazing, but like five star book would read, would definitely willing and, and excited to pick up more Tiffany D. Jackson. So uh, if you can't tell it's raining and uh, I'm about to head over to the climbing gym. Um, I don't know, it's, it's like hard and weird to try to get any footage um, in there. So I'll try to get something if I can. Um, it's even just helpful to like see yourself do movements. Um, like I record myself in the gym to check my form and stuff like that. And so, um, I might even try to, it, uh, under the guise of, I want to, I want to be able to look at my movements. Um, maybe I'll, maybe I'll get my friend to record me or to set up my water bottle or something like that in a way that I can record myself on a wall. There's this one particular climb 
it's rated a five nine if you have any idea what that means and um i've i've tried and failed probably six to eight times at this point and the other day i got like the closest i've been there's just one particular move that i can't get i'm getting closer it's feeling better and so i'm hoping that today is the day so i'm gonna shut up for now and i'll catch up with you later it is so fun oh my gosh i was climbing like crazy stuff today stuff like way like i didn't think that i would be able to climb the this one like purple beast that i've been trying to get i finally got today um there are times when called a lunch break where um like your blair is kind of holding you on like you need a break your forearms get super pumped up so like full full of blood so like you know the feeling when you have been riding a bike and you get off and your quads feel really weird. So it's like that, but in your forearms from gripping and then you like can't hold on. Um, and so I, there, I took a few times where I had to just like sit there and kind of shake my arms out and try to, try to let the pump, the lactate dissipate. But um, I got that one. That one's a five rated a five nine and then it's a hard five nine. And then I did some five tens as well. Um, again, I think one of them I just went right up, um, and then another one I took some I took some breaks on as well. I think I did a five eleven too. So, um, like you probably don't know anybody knows what any of this means. I didn't know what this meant, you know, a few weeks ago. But um, apparently, it's like really impressive that I'm doing it so early on in uh, in my climbing career. Like you can literally count on maybe even one hand definitely two hands but maybe even one hand how many times i've climbed at this point um so it's just really exciting to like to have a new thing to be ex excited to be have a new thing to be excited about and i'm loving it and have new friends and uh yeah it's a good time it's sunday morning i've been reading lady parts and screwing around on social media as one does on a sunday morning drinking my coffee and i was just looking at my facebook memories um, I love looking at the Facebook memories, especially to see pictures like of the kids when they were babies or younger or, you know, just fun stuff that we did together. And, um, of course, to see pictures of Sam. Well, six years ago today, we were in uh, dire straits. He was in critical condition. Um, he was having life-threatening complications from an abdominal surgery that he had. And... The thing that struck me the most and the thing that always made me more emotional than anything was that as I was going through my memories, it was countless, I mean, I could have counted, but countless people who had shared the update asking for prayers and or people posting uh, specifically and telling me that that we were in their prayers and, you know, give my buddy a hug, all that kind of stuff, like one of the great silver linings of everything that I went through with Sam is just really being able to see what really matters and the way that people will come together when you really need them. All right, so before I can do anything else today, I really need to get this kitchen under control. Countertop is a mess. Sink is full of stuff. Um, when my parents moved in, my mom said it was kind of going to be, she would take on the responsibility of like starting the dishwasher, unloading the dishwasher, that kind of thing. Um, she doesn't do a whole lot around the house. The, oh, my dog's talking to me. So that's kind of like her responsibility, but her depression has been really bad lately. And so things fall behind. And then the more it falls behind, the worse it gets. And then if you have depression, the harder it is to, if it just becomes overwhelming and the harder it is to, um, even think of tackling it. So, um, also my parents, hang on, I gotta take care of the dog. So my parents both have this lovely habit of like 
setting their dishes in the sink to soak when you could just like rinse it out, use the sponge or the brush like right then. Um, like I don't, I don't get it. And then this, the, the sink just gets full of stuff and then things overflow. Or what happens is the dishwasher gets full and not started or gets started and then not unloaded. And then the stuff piles up in the sink. And so that's kind of what happens. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically I'm gonna listen to an audiobook. I just picked up, oh gosh, what's it called? Let me see if I can pull it up while I'm talking to you. Apparently I can't open another app while I'm talking to you. I just attempted that and uh, shut myself off. But I just picked up uh, on Libby, Libby, a skip the line book. It's called Tumble by, I think it was Cecilia C. Perez. And um, like, I think it was a girl. I think it takes place in Mexico. And she kind of like learns about her family through luchadors. I think I think that's what it was. Um, it sounded like just kind of like a cute, charming uh, middle grade book. And it was a, a skip the line. It was available. None of the other books on my, my middle grade books on my middle grade TBR were available. And then I don't want to, I don't want to listen to Middle March at a time when I think I might, my mind might like wander and get distracted because I really need to be able to like pay attention if I'm listening to Middle March on audiobook. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some headphones in, noise canceling headphones, take care of this kitchen, drink some more coffee and listen to, what was the name of that book? Tumble? Was that what it was? <laughs> I forgot all that. I forgot already. Beautiful blue sky over here and the impending storm over here. And perfect temperature. Dishes are done. I feel so much better. The dishwasher has been started and there's about a half hour window before it's one starts raining and two, I'm gonna leave for the climbing gym. So I'm gonna walk out basically like 15 minutes, walk out, turn around and head back, listening to tumble on audiobook. So the thing is, what starts this whole, uh, like, the conflict of the story is that, oh, what's her name? <laughs> I can't remember the main character's name. Our main girl, um, she has been raised by her mom and her stepdad, Alex, and Alex wants to formally adopt her. And uh, even though she loves him, and thinks of her as her dad, it's now bringing up the question of who's her bio dad. And it turns out that he actually might be a famous wrestler. And so that's where the Luchadores plot line comes in. So very early on in the book and she's basically doing some research. So this suffers from or uses the kind of like miscommunication trope or like lack of communication trope. It is really common in, I think in middle grade books where if the kid would just have a conversation with the adult in the room, then, uh, you know, like there would be no storyline. Um, it is at least addressed that like mom never wants to talk about her bio dad, this kind of thing. Um, but it's again, one of those, like, if you just had a conversation, there literally would be no plot. You'd find everything out and we wouldn't have to go to research libraries to, to, to do all this like behind the scenes, behind mom's back kind of stuff. But you know, it's a middle grade book and that's a plot in a lot of adult books as well, or a plot, a uh, plot advice rather, um, in a lot of adult books as well. not time it right. It is now officially raining and I'm a good at least third of a mile to half a mile away from home. So not wearing any rain resistant, water resistant clothing. So probably gonna have to change my clothes before I can leave for the gym. It's okay. It's beautiful, fresh, early spring rain, late winter, early spring rain. 
Pachu, the birds or the, the trees are in bloom and the birds are singing. I don't understand hail. Who understands weather better? It's 47 degrees and it's hailing. I don't know if I can catch any, but I'm watching it bounce off of me. It's hailing, it's 47 degrees. Isn't that like way too warm for hail? Or maybe it's frozen up, it's frozen in the clouds and then it's dropping the surface level to 47 degrees down here. I don't know. Oh, I feel like I just walked out of it. It literally just stopped raining. Oh my goodness, what a good session. I am probably really going to regret this tomorrow. I, this is the first time I've climbed back to back days and my forearms are so freaking done. I thought my forearms were done like five climbs before I finally finished. So I was about two straight hours of climbing. Um, I mean, I'm climbing and then I'm belaying the other guy, but your arms are still working, especially the shoulders and the forearms. Um, not as much as when you're climbing, but um, when you're belaying somebody else, you're not really resting. Um, I, as if, if you were actually doing nothing. So, um, I don't know. I didn't count how many climbs I did, but probably eight, I would guess. Um, and again, I'm climbing stuff that before yesterday I wouldn't have expected to do. So I think it's just a good lesson in like trying things, just trying things more than there goes my friend leaving. Um, just pushing yourself as long as it's safe in a controlled environment, pushing yourself farther than you think you can go. And sometimes that means, you know, if you're running, it means like, can you run for another 30 seconds before you take a walk break? Or can you do another half mile? Um, you know, it's kind of like, I was talking to somebody the other day um, who is a, she used to be a fifth grade teacher. Oh, it was one of my clients. She used to be a fifth grade teacher. And we were talking about pushing yourself and, and she's been working out for a long time and she looks amazing. Like the lady is ripped and she but she never tries heavier weights so i was telling her okay if you can do 15 to 20 reps of something you can do a heavier weight and do fewer reps like let's let's aim for eight to ten reps and do heavier weight and i said if not doing that and, and continuing to do the same weight for those high reps is like stopping getting to a fifth grade reading level and then never pushing yourself past it um so you're not going to get better unless you go outside of your comfort zone and attempt to do more and kind of the the i don't know one of the mottos i guess of climbing is if you're not failing you're not trying so you don't have to top every climb that you do you're going to come off the wall and that's okay that's how you get better and that's how you learn and i think it totally applies to the rest of life I wanted to sneak in here that I did finish Tumble. I was looking for it. I don't have a physical copy. I listened to it on audiobook. I finished Tumble by Celia C. Perez. It was so, so good. Addie, our main character, as I talked about before, kind of has this decision to make where whether her, her mom kind of puts it up to her, whether she is going to be okay with her stepfather adopting her. And this leads her down kind of this quest to find out who her biological father is. And it turns out he is from a famous Mexican wrestling, Mexican wrestling family. And she gets to know her father's family, essentially. And there's, there's all sorts of like, her, her mom is a, um, some sort of paleontologist that like does the actual like uncovering of the of the fossils and stuff. So there's a, there's a lot of kind of um, symbolism about about um, removing the layers and finding out what's actually deeper behind, uh, behind things and discovering the history of things. Um, with the luchadores is about like taking off our masks. Um, found family and and what does family actually mean? The true meaning of family, that kind of stuff. This was one of my favorite middle grade, like realistic middle grade books maybe that I've ever read. Um, and I hope this one stays with me. Um, that's one thing I, I find in general, I have a terrible memory for books, but particularly middle grade for some reason, they don't stick with me very well, but I feel like this one might. Um, I was just thinking, I, I read Esperanza Rising, I think last year for middle, like, middle grade March, and I have zero memory of it. I could not tell you what it's about at all. I know I read it. I have no idea what it was. So I hope that Tumble stays with me. I really, really liked Addie as a character and the growth that she makes and the, the, yeah, the growth, the growth, the growth that she makes and who she realizes that, that she is. 
highly recommend Tumble by Celia C. Perez. It's Sunday evening. It's about 8.30. Uh, I was gotten home a little while ago from my friend Jen's. So she had texted me saying that she wanted me to, she wanted to do some personal training with me. So we went, I went over, checked out her apartment, uh, her apartment gym, great apartment gym. It's going to be no problem is so we're just trying to hammer out, uh, like the days and times and all that. But, um, as always with her, I ended up having a really great conversation. And one of the things that kind of keeps coming up that we discussed was kind of taking that opportunity, putting yourself in a position to have an opportunity. And a lot of that comes to pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, which is what is exactly what I was talking about earlier, um, about like with the rock climbing situation. Um, and, um, it's so cool because actually I, I met the woman got, that got me into to rock climbing. I met through Jen, like Jen's the one that runs TEDx and Meredith and I met through TEDx Folsom. Um, run, Jen doesn't run TEDx. She runs TEDx Folsom. Um, so anyhow, <clears throat> Long day. I'm going to get back to Lady Parts. Um, I feel really tired, so I don't know how long I'll be able to read this for, but I'm now right about at the halfway point and uh, really getting a lot from it. Um, I'm really tired, so we'll see how long I actually um, get into it tonight before it's time to head off to bed. Um, one thing that I think is really apparent, though, and as, as I'm reading this, I dog-eared a couple pages, is so um, Deborah Copagan is 56 now. This book was published in 2021, so she was in her early to mid-50s when she was writing this book. And her view of men and her experience of men, and particularly her ex-husband, is very much that of a, what does that make her, like, a late Gen Xer, um, or like an older, on the older side of Gen X. And I think it's really, really different being like being an old millennial myself. Gosh, my mom is talking to her dog. It's just like so loud. <laughs> you just hear this high pitch voice in the other room. Um, anyway, but like the, 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 just the, um, the way that fathers show up in lives and husbands show up as husbands in relationships today um you know for those of us kind of in the um you know I would say 45 and under crowd versus the you know 45 plus I think is really different so this is gonna make you for a really interesting book discussion I think and this is of course generalizing groups of people which you can't do but you can do so I think this will make for a really interesting book club discussion because there are only two of us who are under 40. Um, there's one other gal, I think she's 38, I'm 39, and then I think everybody else is over 50. So I, I think that'll be for an interesting book club discussion. With that, I'm going to close out this vlog. Thank you for watching. Remember, every day is a great day for a great day, all day. Mm -hmm.